clips and fasteners and stuff. Would you give State Farm a hood on a high front end hit on a car that needs a hood? Would you? Would you just say here, I'm not going to bill you for the hood. Just take it. It's cool, right? The clip is no different. It's a part that has a part number, okay? Just like the freaking hood does, okay? Um, it, the only difference is, is that hood's four and a quarter and the clip is 25 cents or whatever the hell it is, right? But, the, but, in it, but it's the same thing, right? So why would you want to give those parts away? Because that's what it really is, is a part, okay? It's just not as an expensive of a part, right? So on the clip note, what I'll tell you, and this is not a repair planning class, but here's what I will tell you about clips and bolts and fasteners. If you don't account for that stuff up front when you take the car apart, chances of you billing for it later are low, very low. You're not going to create a supplement for 10 to $15 or $20 for clips. You might do it if you're DRP with somebody, um, but even then you're reluctant because you don't want to make S3 on an <coughs> estimate for $10 for the clips because it makes us look stupid. Um, right? Yes, sir? And even then, there's some manufacturers that specifically say for uh, fender liners, wheel oil, whatever, you have to replace those Correct. clips. Correct. Yes. And if you guys get that, you have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's a good point. You know, so there is a lot of, if, you, if you've never been to uh, OEM One Stop, so OEM Number One Stop.com, um, there's a lot of free OE position statements you can pull from there. You can also, uh, you know, get on the pay side of that company and get even more information. Um, to your point, there's all data that you can get to that. And quite honestly, the OB procedures are becoming more and more and more prevalent. And they're going to make it easier. I don't know if anybody saw where uh, GM signed with Mitchell now. Um, did anybody see that? So not to completely bunny trail, but this world of the insurance company running this industry is starting to come to a halt, right? The OE has decided that they want to play in this, in this field. And I think everybody, you know, I'm fortunate. I get to travel the country and hear people all the time. Y'all are caught up in your day-to-day -day trying to run a shop, so I get it. But the OEs now have people on the payroll. Uh, GM has come out and said that they are taking first point of contact away from the insurance industry. They didn't even mince words about it. Um, they will be contacting you on OnStar if you wreck your car, and they will direct you on where to go get your car repaired. Does everybody know <coughs> that? So it's happening. It's already there. Every OE has the capability of it right now. The only reason why you're not seeing people call you and if you are a certified, say, Nissan shop, uh, and say, hey, Nissan sent me, is they just haven't flipped the switch yet. Um, they are trying to get their program into place and then once they flip the switch um, if you haven't considered being OE certified for you know some you really shouldn't right and so not to get too far down that money trail but what I tell people is this is you need to look at your sales mix different sales mix you need to look at your sales mix of what kind of cars that you fix obviously at a Nissan dealer I would hope that you know, be Nissan certified right uh, but it could be that you need to be Honda certified as well, depending on what your sales mix is, right? And Honda, um, unlike Toyota, they're happy to put just about anybody on their program as long as you can meet the requirements, right? So a smart business owner would look at your mix, right, and, and say, okay, 22% of my work is Honda. 17% of it is Nissan. You see what I'm saying? GM is only 6%, right? So maybe I don't want to go down that path, right? You see what I mean? But I do believe that, um, and it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, it, it's possible we could see DRPs completely go away. Um, though if that happens, it'll be a slow crawl um, because Geico and Progressive will dig in like a tick, I can promise you that. Um, but the other ones are already starting to shift gears, right? And I can see this in Dallas where one of my good friends and an old A-Tech of mine left the business a long time ago and he's a DE for Allstate, okay? Allstate just fired I, a lot of people in Dallas. I say just, about three or four months ago they fired like 60 to 80 long-term adjusters with cars and bennies and all those things and they replaced them all with the same head count with lower cable people that are in their photo plane. Yeah, they do it now. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 you're good. 
fall off. But I know that they did that here locally as well, that they took a good portion of adjusters that were like in the Northwest Houston area, and they're like a, a form of a group that they do all total losses on the right. inside. So basically, yeah. instead of having them go around at different storage lines and facilities, they'll have a claim that they know it's a high probability of storage uh, made a total loss, and they'll just submit photos and have the whole process done from basically a room like this of like eight people. And it was kind of like a trial basis, and it was like six months ago or something like that yeah, yeah. when they're trying to. It's but happened. you know, all states, they were ahead of the whole photo claims and all that nonsense, right. so they're willing to take them. And so yeah. they can, here's the thing, and they're not going to admit this, what they can see or what I know for sure is they've got nowhere else to save any money. They can't squeeze the shops anymore. Y'all are squeezed to about as far as you can be squeezed on a direct repair deal right now. Um, the only place they've got left to control this thing is internally, so it's cost containment, right, which we're kind of talking about on a much lower level with paint material. Um, so. This photo thing is here to stay. Uh, the virtual estimating, has anybody anybody called you yet and said, hey, let's get on FaceTime or virtual assist? Or virtual assist. assist. Okay, okay, that shit is here to stay. Um, I would tell this to you, um, as a consultant of shops, embrace it. Don't fight it. Uh, figure out a way to beat the system. This is an advantage for you and a totally bunny trailing right now. But this is, I have shops that like, Screw them, I'm gonna bill them an admin fee and blah, blah. And that's cool if that's what you do. I'm not here to help you make business decisions or, or to make them for you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to make them for you. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's where you take it at advantage. I mean, I've, yeah. there's been situations where I've done it and, uh, you know, the nib and you chase it. <coughs> I, ch I chase it a lot and I still get paid for it. Sure, sure. You know, uh, especially Allstate. Just take that at, at your advantage. Yeah, you know, some DRPs can't, you know, do that, but. Hey, if you're in an independent shop, do it. Yeah, you know, for sure. Use it, use it at your advantage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, think about this. Would you rather deal with somebody who uh, just got promoted to the uh, photo claims area or with my buddy who was an ATEC for me for 15 years that actually does know what the hell he's looking at? And he's been indoctrinated, so, you know, the poor bastard has lost some brain cells along the way and working for Allstate, right? So, I mean, dude, they're good. I mean, they've got some stuff in their water cooler up there that will make you buy in. You know? the same way. Huh? Oh, yeah, no, they're all the same. They're, they're, they're phenomenal at it. I've told my buddy, right, I've been like, dude, are you listening to yourself? This is the same guy that is a very, very good tech of mine, but when he didn't get what he wanted, uh, on his supplements or stuff, this damn impact would go sliding across my shop floor, right? He's that tech, you know what I mean? Angry, you know? And now he's out there screwing my customers, you know? I'm like, how can you do that, dude? That's just him yeah. talking, right? But they indoctrinate, they really do. But my point is, though, I would much rather deal with a, a photo person, not to discount their level of knowledge, and have my gun loaded and beat them over the phone <coughs> than to deal with my buddy David out on the lot where my tech asks for eight hours on a door that only needs five. Because he's not going, I'm not going to win that deal with someone like you. You know what I mean? But I can win it with a good photo, right? Um, that's the other thing too on photos, and I'm going to get off this photo thing. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Embrace the photo deal. Be smarter than the people on the other end of the line than you and take freaking photos that, that show the damage that you're asking for. The biggest complaint that, and, and I've seen this stuff, we send photos in that don't show the damage. So I'll tell you a funny story. I got a shop in California that is more on the, I'm going to beat the system, I'm going to embrace the new way, which is a smarter way to go because it ain't going to go away. You know what he did? He sent all of his estimators to photography school. And I laughed when he told me, about that, but it's not as, not necessarily such a stupid thing to do, you know. So they now all understand uh, lighting and you know, and so at dealerships, I, I, maybe Mossy has this, but I've been in a number of dealerships, and I doubt we can get the space up at an independent. But at dealerships now, since people buy cars online, you know, a lot of dealers have a photo booth set up within their store. Has anybody seen this, right? Where they've basically taken a stall away and they've got those white 
you know, just like you can go get your damn picture taken for Christmas, right? They would. So I'm sure Sewell does. I spent five years at Sewell in Dallas, so it would shock me if they did it, right? I can tell you Central Nissan in Houston has one, because I was just at that store. Uh, yeah, that place is new-ish. And they've got a, um, they've got a whole, and, and they just roll cars in there to take pictures of them. I'm not saying we can afford to do that, um, you know, give up a stall for picture taking, but we could be smart about how we position the car with lighting and things like that so it shows, um, you know, what it is that we, we're trying to pay for, right? And if you're the shop that's sending in pictures that are easy to look at and it's not questionable, you're going to have a lot less argument because there's a lot of people out there that don't, right? So just be smarter than your competition. And your competition's weak, just so you know. That's awesome, the whole virtual assist thing. We, we do on a table. What a time saver, right? It's, it's, it's fast. Like it's, Snapsheet, too, yeah, right? It's fast, it's easy, and most of the time, I say every time, but most of the time, the person on the other end, the adjuster, they give you what you want. No knowledge, they want. right? They give you what you want. Right, so if you, um, <clears throat> and that's my point to everybody okay. is, is that if you, what we even with my buddy David coming to your store, right? What our what our industry has always been really crappy at is proving what we need to fix the car, right? We were just talking about pictures, but it's not just pictures, right? A lot of times we, I'm guilt, way guilty of this. Um, a car would come in, I dispatch it out to a tech, he gets it apart. Maybe it was back in the day when I made him write a supplement sheet. He put it on my desk. Um, I get busy. I call the guy to come out and look at the car. Um, and maybe I didn't spend, I paused. in some cases, I didn't even go out there and look at the damn car, I'm gonna be honest, right? I just wanted to get the supplement going, right? And get the clock rolling. Other <coughs> times I would go there out there and talk to the tech and I'd hear what you have to say, but I really never put anything together to prove why I needed what I needed, right? So it really all falls into the same area. If you're the shop that can prove to them why you're asking for something, you're going to get it, you know, most of the time. Yeah, and that's the thing you do. You, yeah. get, you get the material and charity with what none of my other shops are asking for. It. Yeah, which other yeah. shops are asking for it. Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, that's the, that is the most, that's the most foolish thing. They, yeah. And they're still saying it all the time. But if you're DRP, though, that's different, right? You're not, right? I am, but first, yeah. we still hammer them. We still hammer them. Yeah. Yeah, they'll kick, as bad as they'll kick you for a severity issue before it's all over. And yeah. you just, you know, I mean, I'm not... You know, if it gets down to it, that's our big thing. We've like, had that conversation with them as well. Oh, it's the whole severity thing. It's, it's, a, it's a stupid standard. Severity shouldn't even be tracked. It shouldn't, you know, with $3,500 estimate, just half of that is a headlight, you know, stuff like that. I've got an entire presentation that I don't want it is severity, why it doesn't matter. You know, we can switch gears and I can pull that up. But severity is insane, right? And I'll break severity down for you real quick. When my farmer COD coordinator used to come in to me and tell me, man, your estimator is doing a great job, no uh, work build not performed, uh, he got all his reference numbers, you know, he did all these things that farmers wanted him to do, right? And then two weeks later, she's sitting in my office with her boss and she's like, you know, Greg, we really got to work on your severity. You know, you're higher than everybody else, so we got to bring your severity down, right? I'm like, hey, time out a second. You were in here two weeks ago, you told me my estimator was a rock star. In essence, what you told me was, is he wasn't billing you for things that we were not doing, right? No work build not performed. He was checking for all the crappy parts that you want me to put on cars, and we've got reference numbers and everything. And now you're in my desk telling me that the guy, that we have a severity issue. So are you asking me for a concession? Because do you understand where I'm going with this, right? You already told me I'm writing a clean sheet. How do I change that? The only way I change that is to give you a 10% discount on parts. Is that what you're asking me for, Mr. Farmers? Well, of course, they're not going to answer that question. Well, that's what State Farm does. Yeah, but they won't really ask because it's illegal, unless they really are, don't mind. Yeah. yeah. No, State Farm's lost their ever loving mind. State Farm, yeah. Yeah, it's 10. Yeah. That was fun. Wow. They've lost, they've lost it lately, so anyway, so there's that. All right, so any questions on that bunny trail? But yeah, just be prepared and, and beat the photo people at their own game, right? Be smarter than the rest of the people around you and you'll, you'll win that. And don't discount the thought process of 
good photos and lighting and things like that, because that will help you beat them at that game as well, right? Okay, so there's a little exercise uh, that comes up on page 14. So we'll quickly, quickly go through that. I really just want to show you the page that comes after it, I guess. So, um, so remember our friend Joe at Reliable? He has always calculated his material gross profit by using his material sales and his monthly invoices, which is archaic as hell, um, from his paint supplier. Let's help him calculate his material gross profit from his previous month, right? So in our example here, um, he's got material sales of 7,500. Is that in your book? Yeah. yeah. And then he's got uh, paint invoices of 6K, right? So it's our sales minus our cost divided by our sales, gives us our gross profit of a walking uh, which I don't think that's in there. So his sales are 75 minus his cost of six divided by 75 gives you a material gross profit of 20%. Y'all all with me there on that little quick calculation? Okay, so um, so we already talked about segregating the supplies and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna beat that up. On this page, and there's, uh, actually let me back up, go to page 15 in your book, so this one right here. So on this one right here, it's a mocked up, and I don't have a slide for it. 